Hey, Titty Gang. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Tits and Talks podcast. My name is Gabby. And I'm Natalie. And we are so excited to have you here with us today as we help you navigate your health journey. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope that you learned something new. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. Hello. (laughs) We are excited today. We are going to be talking about something that is near and dear to our hearts, and we've been dealing with the stress, the S word. I wouldn't say it's necessarily near and dear. (laughs) (laughs) I would prefer it not to be near and dear to my heart. (laughs) Um, But it's something that we all deal with, and it is very important in order to have some tools to deal with them. So today we are going to be talking about um, more scientific background on how chronic stress um, affects your body. We're going to talk about how it affects your brain, your digestive system, um, and just different sciencey facts about that. So we're excited to kind of get into the science of it. Yeah, I feel like stress, when we hear the word stress, we kind of think like, oh, it's just like an emotional or like a mental thing. Mm-hmm. It, and I don't feel like enough is talked about with how much it affects everything else. Yeah. Um, and so I think kind of diving into like how Gabby said, like how it affects the brain specifically, the, the digestive system, pain tolerance, immune system, all that stuff. Hopefully Mm -hmm. this episode helps show you guys just like how encompassing stress is and Mm -hmm. how harmful it can be to the body and why it's important to try and manage stress and prevent it. And I think it's, it's not to make you more stressed knowing about what's going on in your body (laughs) with the chronic stress, but it's helpful to be more educated on it and also, um, develop tools that work for you in order to manage what's going on in your life. So, I'm going to start off by talking about how chronic stress um, affects your brain. Um, And I am a big nerd. I love the brain. I am doing neuro right now in PT school. So we've been learning about all the different lobes and all the different functions within the brain. So I can nerd out on this all day. But get nerdy. um, (laughs) We're going to get nerdy. Alrighty, so um, with chronic stress, and this isn't just stress that we kind of feel on an everyday basis, right? Um, On an everyday basis, we may have stress that is with family stress or just with your job, like not those types of stress, but that chronic stress, if you don't have um, efficient ways to deal with your stress and you're stressed every single day for weeks and weeks on end, this is um, things that can happen to your brain. So With chronic stress, it will affect the prefrontal cortex as well as the limbic system. So um, prefrontal cortex, what's responsible in this lobe of your brain is like your behavior, um, those complex thinking skills, um, your personality and things like that. And then in the limbic system, this is more um, of an emotional response. So this is like your fear, emotion, hunger, um, your like sex drive and things like that. Um, so whenever these are affected by chronic stress, what can happen is you, and you probably know this whenever you are stressed, you kind of get more irritable. So, (laughs) yep. (laughs) So everything is kind of on that amplified system and it creates that if you don't have a good way to deal with that, it creates a feedback system in your brain. So it constantly, Um, You get stressed, you get triggered, and then it's a constant feedback system in your brain. And this is really tiring on um, the communication cells in your brain. So what can often happen is your brain starts to atrophy if this is chronic. Um, So that can put you at risk of developing things like um, depression or anxiety because you are having that constant feedback system in your brain. Um, and you're constantly just in a negative state and then it's like goes into like how it affects like your sex drive which is like the limbic system and all your emotions like usually when you stress you might notice like you have a low sex drive or you don't really want to do something and this kind of ties back into um, training in your health like whenever you are stressed you're naturally not going to want to eat healthy foods you're probably going to go more to that processed foods Um, you're going to want to overeat and indulge because Eating is something that makes us feel better, um, and it's something that it may be like emotional eating, where a lot of us um, go to food whenever we are feeling sad, we're feeling angry, stressed, depressed, things like that. 
Um, so it can have detrimental effects on that as well as your training. Usually when you're stressed, you don't really have motivation to go to the gym and train. And if you don't have that consistent discipline, um, habit built, then it's just a constant feedback loop where you're stressed, you're going to eat more. You're not going to want to do things. You're going to neglect your relationships too. Um, usually when you're chronically stressed and you are, depressed and things like that you don't really want to hang out with people I know that I've gone through that where I am just like kind of in a a bad and low state and I usually had plans or like I'll cancel because I just don't want to see anyone I don't want to talk to anyone so um, finding ways to deal with that is so so important that way you can continue to keep those relationships you can be cognitive of okay I'm having this stress what can I do in order to um, reduce that. Mm-hmm. So can I add something? Real quick? Yeah. So going off of what Gabby said, like with stress lowering sex drive and stuff, it's actually funny because things that can, um, improve your stress drive or I'm sorry, <laughs> your stress confused. drive, the things that can improve your stress is actually having sex. Mm-hmm. Um, sex stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system mm-hmm. in our body. And so when it comes to stress and kind of understanding what it does in our body, there's two nervous systems to really focus on. There's mm-hmm. the parasympathetic and then the sympathetic. Mm-hmm. And the parasympathetic is known as like the rest and digest. It's like the healing phase. It's when our body can essentially recover, replenish everything, digest food. And then the sympathetic nervous system is like the fight or flight. It's the stress hormones. It's the adrenaline. Um, and so in order to, you know, stimulate that stress release and kind of that healing Um, you need to be in the parasympathetic nervous Mm -hmm. system. And so sex is actually an activity that stimulates that. I think I talked about all that I want to on the brain and its effects. Do you want to go more into like the digestive system? Yes, I would love to. So with stress, um, it has a really big role on our digestive system and how food gets utilized and moved around because the gut and the brain have a very intimate connection. Um, the gut actually has its own nervous system or what research refers to as like a second brain and it's called the enteric nervous system. And so, mm-hmm. you know, that expression where it's like, oh, you should trust your gut. That is 100% true mm-hmm. and science fact. Like your yes. gut has so many microbes and organisms and bacteria and all this stuff just living in it that can interpret the emotions from your brain and also influence the emotions that you feel. And so your gut can pick up on things that maybe other parts of your body can't. Mm -hmm. So definitely listen to that gut feeling, do what your gut says. Yeah. Um, But so what kind of happens in our GI tract, which is our stomach, our intestines, um, when we become stressed is, so when we get stressed out, the brain tries to optimize our body's well-being and survival. And so in the process of doing that, the brain releases corticotropin releasing factor yeah. or CRF. Mm-hmm. I figured out how to say that word from last <laughs> yes. episode. It's the um, HPA system, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which essentially turns on the secretion of stress hormones like cortisol or mm-hmm. wait for it, norepinephrine. <laughs> also, norepinephrine. Yeah, also learned how to say that from last episode. <laughs> um And so once these hormones are released, the gut goes through a stress-induced reaction because, Mm -hmm. once again, kind of circling back, the gut and brain are very intimately connected. Um, And what we feel in our brain affects what our gut does and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Um, Kind of going off what Gabby said with, like, how the brain is a feedback loop. The brain and gut as a whole is just one big feedback loop. Mm -hmm. Um, And so one thing that can happen when the stress induced reaction occurs is either an increase or decrease in gut contractions, kind of depending on the emotions being felt, which I think is so fascinating that our stomach's response to certain emotions Mm -hmm. kind of mimic whatever emotion you're feeling. So like with fear, the stomach and the small intestine actually decrease contractions, Mm -hmm. um, but the large intestine increases contractions. And then with anger, the gut, the small and large intestine all increase contractions. So you think about it like, when you get super angry, you get like very worked up. Yeah, yeah. very worked up. And essentially the same thing's happening in your mm-hmm. body. And so the reason why we have contractions in our gut and small intestine and large intestine to begin with is we have something called motility within those organs. Mm-hmm. And I want you to kind of think, I mean, essentially they are muscles, but think of your stomach and intestines as muscles. And mm-hmm. You know, if you've ever seen an anatomy picture of what your intestines look like, mm-hmm. you know that, like, your large intestine goes around, like, it goes sideways, upwards, downwards. The small mm-hmm. intestine's kind of, like, zigzaggy, essentially. Mm-hmm. And so, like, 
in order to get that food moved throughout the system, your intestines have to contract and release the food to essentially like push it along. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of why we have contractions to begin with. Mm -hmm. Um, And so then like when we feel sadness um, or stressed out, depending on what type of stress, if it's a stress that makes us feel kind of more sad, then this falls under this. But if it's more like stress that makes us feel very worked up, then it probably Mm -hmm. falls under the contractions of how the anger is, where everything increases. Um, But with sadness, um, the gut and the small and large intestine, all the contractions decrease and your food essentially just kind of like sits there. Yeah. So to kind of help make this a little bit of like a better picture, let's say you had eggs for breakfast (laughs) and and you're driving to work and someone cuts you off and you get road rage and you become angry. So you're sitting there and your stomach begins aggressively contracting with the increased production of stomach acid actually slow down, like emptying out of the stomach. Um, And then while you're like sitting there fuming, pissed off, having room rage, (laughs) your intestines like twist it up and they also spit out mucus and other digestive juices into your system, which they're not supposed to be there. So like it's, you know, it's not going to feel very good. That's why Mm -hmm. we sometimes get stomach aches when like we're super angry or things like that. Um, (laughs) And then let's say on the opposite spectrum, like you eat your eggs for breakfast and you're on, a way, on your way to work and you get stuck in traffic and you become stressed out about being late and mm-hmm. now you're nervous and you're feeling upset. Well, then your intestines hardly move at all and your eggs just kind of sit there not being digested. Your or eggs absorbed. are like, damn, man. <laughs> yeah, they're just hanging out in the stomach like, yeah. I bought a ticket to the uh, large intestine. Why, <laughs> why are we still sitting here? <laughs> and so essentially like your gut mirrors every emotion that your brain feels. And so like with my business and how I coach women, you know, a lot of times women have, and men too, but like Mm -hmm. I work with women, so that's why I'm saying women, but like the women that I work with, a lot of them and myself included don't have the greatest relationship with food. And we Mm -hmm. tend to feel like guilt around certain foods or stressed out about eating more or things like that. Mm -hmm. And I always tell them like, look, there is no good or bad food. Like there may be ingredients that are kind of harmful to our body or our Mm -hmm. body may not know like what to use it. Yeah. Or not as nutritious or like, um, and so the time, the only time that food becomes bad is when we tell ourselves like, oh, what I just ate is bad. Mm-hmm. Because like, let's say, going back to the eggs, let's say you had eggs for breakfast and you ate it and you're like, wow, that was really good. That was yummy. I'm glad that I feel my body. I'm just going to move on with my day. Well, then your gut's ability to do everything that it's supposed to do is going to be so much more efficient. You're going to absorb more nutrients. You have mm-hmm. a less likely chance of like, that food being stored as energy and your body's just your body is so smart and it knows Mm -hmm. what to do but then if our brain starts getting in the way of it if like let's say you know I don't know Gabby think of what you what is a bad food in like your opinion I know you don't think food is bad but like what um I don't know uh let's just say like let's say like donuts okay so let's say instead of having eggs for breakfast you have a donut yeah it's kind of the same thing like is that the most nutritious no are you, are you providing your body with a lot of protein early in the morning? No. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there's still nutrients within that donut that your body mm-hmm. can absorb. And so if you just kind of have that donut and just be like, wow, that was really good. I enjoyed that. That was a nice way to start my, <laughs> to start my day, I guess. Um, and just kind of having that awareness of like, because that pro- or that donut is a little low in protein, just being mindful of like, all right, so my snack and lunch and dinner, I really Mm -hmm. should prioritize protein because Mm -hmm. I chose to have something that has very minimal protein for breakfast. That should be like the extent of the conversation in your brain about that food. But if we have that donut for breakfast and we're like, oh man, like I shouldn't have done that. Like that, that's a lot of sugar. That's a lot of carbs. Like that's going to make me fat. Well, all those things that you're thinking in your brain then get translated to your gut Mm -hmm. and then your gut starts feeling that. And it's like, well, if this is stressing the human out, like the human. The human. Like, if your gut's talking to yeah. you. If your gut's like, well, our human is stressed out about this, like, then the sympathetic nervous system comes into play, and it kind of starts implementing that stress response. Mm-hmm. And so, once again, whenever we go into our sympathetic nervous system, whether it's because there's, like, an actual physical threat mm-hmm. trying to hurt us, or it's an internal perceived threat, our body still deals with it essentially the same way. Yeah. Our system works in a very conservative, subtractive way. And so, like, if you're super stressed out... Um, or if someone's trying to like attack you or something like that, your body goes into the sympathetic nervous system and starts trying to figuring out like, okay, what systems can we stop right now so that we can take energy from it 
to fight off whatever the threat is. Um, you know, our body's number one thing every day is survival. It mm-hmm. wants us to live. It wants us to keep going. And so in order to survive a threat or a stressed out mindset, the body, you know, stimulates those stress hormones, the cortisol and the norepinephrine. <laughs> and, um, and essentially your body's trying to figure out how much energy it needs to take from other systems that aren't vital. So things like your sex hormones, your digestive system, and it's like, how much energy can we take from this? to go towards whatever the threat is, you know, Mm -hmm. because if you're trying to run away from someone, you're going to need to utilize a lot more energy. Yeah. But as your body's figuring that out, it kind of just stops all those systems or slows it down. And so you may not think that those thoughts are doing much, but they're actually like stopping your digestive Mm -hmm. system. They're messing up with like the gastric juices that help with it. Once again, because there was that delayed response in digestion, like your body may not be able to absorb as many nutrients. It may just after the whole thing, may just be like, well, you know what, like, we're kind of over this, let's just kind of keep moving it along and maybe store some more energy, or even if you utilize more energy in that stress response, you have to refuel that fuel storage that you utilize, so Mm -hmm. it's gonna, like, the food has a more likely chance of being stored for energy if you're in a stressed out state of mind when you're eating, Mm -hmm. and so just something to keep in mind is that the body cannot heal with a negative or threatened mindset. And I don't mean heal in the aspect of, like, illness or wounds, but, like, heal... It also affects that, too. I mean, on those things, yes, Mm -hmm. but, like, in a very... I mean heal in a very encompassing way. Yeah. Like, replenishing our muscles after workout is healing. Mm -hmm. Like, digestion can be a form of healing. Like, our body cannot... Function. Yeah, function if it's in a stressed out, negative, or threatened mindset, Mm -hmm. whether that is from external factors or internal factors. And so, just remember that, you know, food really only becomes bad when you start telling yourself that it's bad. If you allow your body to do what it was designed to do, Mm -hmm. you're going to get way better outcomes digestive-wise, bowel movement-wise, nutrient absorption-wise, energy-wise. And you're also just going to create a healthier relationship with food so that food doesn't control you and your emotions. Yeah. And the body is so, so smart. And the more that you feed these systems, so the more that you tell yourself, oh, this donut is negative, and you can constantly feed that feedback loop, the more and stronger that connection is going to be in your brain. So it's just going to become a habit. Um, It's something that you really have to work at to break. I know that whenever I stopped competing, it was something I really had to intentionally work at and I had to completely take out the scale. I deleted all of my tracking apps and all those things that kind of gave me that personality and those habits like I had to completely take that out of my life because it was not serving me Um, and the brain is just so like amazing like it's the more so basically you have this thing called neuroplasticity in your brain Um, so it's basically the more that you do something um, the stronger those connections get in your brain so whenever you're learning the more that you study something the uh, more you're going to know it. The more that you do something, if you're squatting in the gym, it's your first time, you're going to be a little wonky, but then your body will create a motor planning um, system and you become more efficient. You start to learn and it's those connections in the brain and your body creating that motor planning and motor control systems with your muscles in order to get better at something. And it goes the same way with your thoughts. The more that you think something, the more Um, that your body is going to believe that it's true. So you need to feed yourself those positive thoughts and you need to be aware and know what your stressors are in order to, okay, I know that you're there. I know that you're here, but what am I going to do about it now Mm -hmm. in order to stop feeding that feedback system so it doesn't become a habit? Yeah. And like one of the most beneficial things you can do is just kind of bring awareness to behavioral and eating habits, Mm -hmm. whether they're positive or negative. And that can sometimes be hard because like, as humans, you know, we don't want to like admit that we're doing things that are detrimental to us or yeah. that we have bad habits or things like that. But regardless of, you know, I really encourage people to respond re- rather than react to things. Mm-hmm. So like if you like, let's say kind of going back to the donut, like let's say you have <laughs> that donut for breakfast or someone offers you a donut and instead of just reacting and being like, oh yes, I want this donut. Take a second, just think like, okay, is there any way that I can add more nutritional value to this so that my body benefits more? And regardless of what you choose, like regardless if you, you know, choose like, um, like maybe there's some turkey sausage or something you choose for that or, you know, or if you're at like Dunkin' getting a donut, also opting for something that has like protein and maybe some more nutrients to it. Like mm-hmm. regardless of what you choose after that, the thing is, is you brought awareness to that, 
eating behavior or that behavioral habit and you took a second to essentially think through how this choice would make you feel Mm -hmm. and so regardless of what you go through afterwards like what matters is that you took the time to bring awareness to that because Mm -hmm. once you have awareness around habits that either work really well for you or don't work for you then it becomes easier to change them or keep progressing with them yeah Mm -hmm. I love that um going at more into the scientific scientific scientities scientity I'm just gonna add titties into every yeah. word now. <laughs> Trademark that. Yeah. <laughs> so going more into the scientific background of stress, um, it can also affect your immune system. So you might notice too. Um, for example, myself, I am very stressed out right now. I have a big exam coming up for PT school. Yeah. The stress that comes from that is um, a lot. <laughs> so. Um, Something that I notice when I do have a lot of stress is your immune system drops. So whenever you do have these chronic stress and you're very, very stressed, um, what releases in your body is called cytokines. And these are like pro-inflammatory markers. So it's basically um, the same thing that your body does whenever you have like a wound or you're injured. Like your body is going to release these cytokines. It um, starts an inflammation process and then it starts a healing process. But whenever you're in this chronic stress, your body is like, something is wrong. So I'm going to release these. Like, we need to help this human out because she, there's something going on with her. Um, So whenever you do release these, it puts your body in a chronic inflammation stage. um, And that can cause things like diseases. So um, whenever you do have chronic stress, you can get things like um, diabetes. So if you are constantly have this release of hormone, and this isn't for everybody on it, obviously. Um, cortisol is in charge of increasing your blood sugar levels. So, um, if you do have chronic stress and you have an increase in your blood sugar levels for an extended period of time, obviously that can lead to things like diabetes. So it's not something with your everyday life and things like that with chronic stress, you can put your body at higher risk for diseases because your immune system drops. Um, and all those little, those little germies are like, "Mm -hmm, it's my time to shine. I can get in here easily. Well, also like if you are super going based off what you're saying, like Mm -hmm. if you're super stressed and stuff, um, and you're getting sick, when that happens, you're actually like getting rid of good bacteria in your gut. Mm -hmm. Um, so our gut bacteria, we have like trillions of microbes Mm -hmm. in our gut and they sit on like the intestinal border and they have very close contact to our immune cells because most of our immune cells are made in our gut because of this bacteria. And so um, if we are super stressed out and we keep getting sick and our body keeps attacking our system and trying to rid whatever pathogen is there and stuff, like we can also decrease our biodiversity of like that ecosystem Mm -hmm. in our gut. And then that just also creates like more opportunity to get sick. And, you know, it's just this, it's this vicious cycle of it's a feedback loop. Everything in the body, the body is so smart that it's like everything works on a feedback loop and it wants to survive. So it's like, whenever you feel those emotions, it's a constant feedback loop. What can I do in order to help this? But sometimes it's detrimental when it comes to stress and negative thoughts and negative emotions. Um, and yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I feel like I have a really good example mm-hmm. about Ted. I'll yeah. Ted I was going to ask you about that, but I didn't <laughs> yeah. know if you wanted to like no, bring I, it up. So I, I was care. like, we'll be okay. transparent. So, yeah. um, I started developing about a year ago. I started developing like some skin issues like eczema and like just some rashes. And I was all, what the frick's going on? Mm-hmm. So I went to my dermatologist and you know, she just did some tests to like rule out, um, like psoriasis and stuff like that and it wasn't she's like yeah it's just eczema and like this type of like rash that comes with viruses or like infections in the body and I was like okay cool like what am I infected with and she was like I don't know like all right cool um so then I went to my holistic doctor and we were just kind of figure we were trying to figure things out and he's like yeah so essentially like um your body is super inflamed like your adrenal gland and your liver aren't detoxifying like your stress well or like the inflammation in your body and we kind of started like backtracking um oh and sorry real quick he also tested for some other stuff and it turned out that I had a parasite in my large intestine so his name is Ted um <laughs> I that's named who Ted him. is yeah that's who Ted is I named I named my parasite so that it was you have a to name him more, yeah so it's um, not fun. like so scary <laughs> Ted. I mean it's, it's so not. silly so we were kind of trying to explore like where I got this parasite. Unfortunately, it is very common to pick up parasites. Um, 
but I told him, I was like, yeah, well, I mean, like, a few years ago, like, I was in Mexico, and I drank the tap water there, which apparently oh, yeah, you're not yeah. supposed to do, oh, and, like, no. I got a lot of GI symptoms, and then, like, three days later, I left to South Africa, and I also had, like, GI problems there and stuff, and he was like, well, you know, you may have picked it up initially in Mexico, you also may have, like, picked up a second one in South Africa, or, Sorry, like, buddy. yeah, Ted wanted a friend, yeah. Ted and Todd. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> and, um... And he was like, and this was about two years ago, and he's like, yeah, and, like, parasites, they have a very long lifespan. They're very um, determined to keep living in the host mm-hmm. there. And so he was kind of explaining, like, because this parasite most likely has been in my body for, like, two years, it makes sense why I didn't start experiencing symptoms until a little while ago because my system identified that that was a pathogen and was trying to get rid of it and get it out. But with parasites, it's a little bit harder and especially, like, I've had a lot of high stress lately, um, things like that, a lot, a, lot, a lot of changes in life. And so um, I've always had some issues with, like, my adrenal gland mm-hmm. and liver, too, just a little back, story, a little back history. Mm-hmm. And so my, like, with my body not being able to detoxify things properly and stuff, what happened is, like, my immune system was trying to fight off this parasite and eventually got a little confused in the signaling mm-hmm. and started attacking my own body and gave me autoimmune <gasps> problems with skin issues now. <laughs> and so um, I am happy to report that Ted is out of my body. Um, Get out of here, Ted. Yeah, and Ted evicted. Well, we're not entirely sure yeah. if there were multiple, but <laughs> if there was, we know for sure Ted was there. So um, so that's just like a, a really crazy example of like what the body can do and how mm-hmm. long it can be fighting for you know, to get rid of whatever is going on. And yeah. so essentially like my body has just been a dumpster fire <laughs> for the past like yeah. two and a half years of just like high inflammation and stress. Yeah. And now, you know, slowly starting to heal, like improving gut health for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and things are definitely getting better. Um, so yeah, just know that like on that note, like if you do go to a doctor and stuff and you're not happy with what they said or what they gave you, you don't mm-hmm. have to take it. That's, like, you don't yeah. have to, like, my dermatologist gave me, like, topical steroids for yeah. it. And I was like, I really don't want to do that because the side effects are terrifying. And, like, yeah. it doesn't, once again, it's a Band-Aid. Like, it fixes it temporarily, but it doesn't, like, I wasn't getting answers on what mm-hmm. the root cause was. And I was actually at, like, a nutrition conference in March, and I was listening to this GI mapping um, physician talking about the gut health and all this stuff. And she's explaining a lot of, like, her symptoms and they were, some of them were similar to mine, and she's like, yeah, so she's like, once again, like, the medical system, like, wasn't really diving into, like, the gut and stuff like that, and they were just like, yeah, here, take this medicine, do this, Mm -hmm. blah, 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 and she was like, you know what, no, like, I wanted to dive more into it, like, I wanted to figure out, like, what the root cause was, so she got into GI mapping, um, and gut health, and realized, came to the conclusion that she had, like, multiple parasites, like, Mm -hmm. low good bacteria, and, like, high bad bacteria, and all this stuff, and I was sitting there, I was like, huh, Imagine if I have a parasite, that'd be wild. And then Ted's like, sitting in there, he's like, Ted, yeah, he's just like, mm-t, mm-t, mm-t. <laughs> and so like, yeah, and then like fast forward a few months when I was told that, I was like, oh, the irony. Yeah, um, let's talk about things that help us manage this stress and kind of give you guys some tools in your little stress toolbox I can mm-hmm. get out and screaming. Yes, yeah. screaming. Helps. No, that actually really does help. <laughs> have you ever just scram into oh a pillow? And I like, scram. I scram. <laughs> Into my, I scrammed into my hands yesterday, like, multiple I times. I was just like, ah, and, like, poor Harley, she's like, what the fuck is on, going on with my mom? Sometimes uh, I'll just do that while I'm driving. Like, you just need a good scream, and then you're like... Well, see, this is why I listen to metal music, because yeah. it does the screaming for me. And I mean, Actually, if you listen to, like, a lot of metal lyrics, they're very deep. Like, they're yeah. very poetic. I love that. Yeah, it's very beautiful. Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> well, so, um, no, but, like, on a serious note, I mean, screaming does help, but... Yeah. So some things that I recommend, kind of depending on, like, what your stress level is and, like, what you're trying to deal with, but some things that you can do to help, like, prevent stress. I'm a big believer in stress breathing techniques. Mm -hmm. Um, So my personal favorite one is box breathing, Um, and it's where you breathe in for a count of four, hold your breath for a count of four, breathe out for a count of four, hold your breath for a count of four. I personally like to pair my box breathing with sun exposure, so I'll usually do it in the morning, whether it's, like, when I'm walking Harley or if I'm just, like, opening up the blinds in my house. If the sun is out, I'll stand there, like, not staring at it, but I'll stand there. Oh, you're going to say naked. (laughs) Sun exposure (laughs) on my box. Um, (laughs) No, but I'll just kind of stand there and just feel the sun on my skin and just 
do the box breathing. Yes. Um, and the great thing about utilizing stress breathing techniques is if you're in public and you get stressed out, no one has to know that you're stressed mm-hmm. because it's just you altering your breathing. Like, you don't have to do anything to, like, warrant attention to yourself if you yeah. don't want it. So mm-hmm. there's uh, there's other forms of stress breathing. I mean, diaphragmatic breathing. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing as stress breathing or box breathing. It's where you're really using your diaphragm and you're focusing on the expansion of your chest um, in order to get all that air in your lungs. And then you they use the saying, um, smell the roses and then blow out the candle. So you're breathing in with your nose and then you're doing a long exhale through your mouth kind of in those pursed lips. Um, so that's another tool that you can utilize <laughs> as well. Um, and I think something that I like to do is Get out of your everyday routine. If you feel like you're constantly stressed, like do something that's out of your routine. Go and hang out with a friend. Like I know when I hang out with Natalie and like I'm very stressed, like I leave and I feel much Worse. better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are actually like those are planned positives. Yeah. It's like a behavioral um, technique. Yeah. Um, it, it helps a lot with like depression, things like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like look at your schedule and plan something that makes you happy. Whether that's hanging out with a friend, Mm -hmm. going on a hike, puzzle, painting, like, it's recommended that you reflect back to what you enjoyed when you were a kid, Mm -hmm. and then do that then. So, like, I loved painting as a kid. Yeah. And Gabby actually took me to some painting place. Oh, um, yeah, it's called Art Attack. Oh, my God. I felt so, I was just so It was so therapeutic. And, yeah, I'm like, oh, I want to take myself back there. So, like, yeah, so the stress breathing is great. If you have more of, like, an angry stress, go get some cheap glass plates. You can get it from Target or Walmart or wherever. And get big Ziploc baggies. Put the plates in the Ziploc baggies and then smash the shit out of it. Yeah. Like, throw it over your head. Like, throw it against stuff. Um, and the reason why I say put it in baggies is so that it's easy cleanup and you're not being a dick leaving broken glass around yeah. for people to step on. So, breaking plates is great. Rage room. <laughs> yeah, Those rage room. So, if you don't want to clean rooms, up the mess. Yeah, yeah. like the um, axe throwing can be yeah. good too. Um, so, all those things of like releasing the energy is great. Yeah. But the only thing is you need to make sure after you release that energy, you fill that energy back up with something positive. So, whether yeah. that's like lighting a candle and breathe, breathing in the scent or going outside and hanging out in nature. Like, you need to fill that energy so that that stress just doesn't come back and mm-hmm. hold occupancy again. Um, some other things that I really like recommending for my clients are these three things. One of it's called brain dumps. The other one is stress jars. And the third one is stress showers. And so (laughs) for the brain dumps, essentially what it is, is sometimes when we're super stressed or like we have a lot going on, our brain can wake us up throughout the nighttime due to cortisol disruptions and melatonin disruptions from stress. Um, but a lot of times like I don't know if you've ever woken up in the middle of the night, you're like, oh, yeah, I need to do that tomorrow. And Me. Yeah. Every night. So well, you might benefit from brain dumps. I do. And so the brain dump, there's two ways that you can do it, and it's kind of figuring out what works best for you. The first one you can do is kind of journal out all your thoughts and just essentially empty your brain, like word vomit onto the page, everything that your brain's feeling. The other thing that you can do, which personally works better for me, is on like a planner or a journal, whatever, you write down just everything that you need to get done tomorrow and everything that you didn't finish today that needs to be moved to tomorrow. So that mm-hmm. essentially everything that's in your brain is now on the paper that like yeah. you're holding on to and trying to remember. And then it can also be helpful after you do those brain dumps to just kind of like sit there and tell your brain like, hey, like we're not going to forget anything. Like let's just rest now. Like you're good to chill out. You yeah. Know? And then stress jars, you get a jar or a bag or a container, like just something to hold stuff. And you get some pieces of paper, and on the paper you write what is causing you stress. You write about why you may feel like it's causing you stress. Um, You can be as detailed or as simple as you want. I mean, it's your stress jar. And then you can fold up the paper, crumple it, whatever, put it in the jar. And then the part that really makes this activity work, and you may feel a little silly doing it, but it's okay, um, is after you put the paper in the jar, you kind of just tell yourself, whether it's verbally or just mentally, like, all right, I've identified what is causing me stress. I'm aware of what's causing me stress. I'm going to work through it, but while I'm working through it, I'm not going to let that negative energy stay on my person. Instead, Mm -hmm. it's going to be in its placeholder, which is the jar. And so, like, verbally saying that, like, you start to believe it, and you kind of, like, essentially manifest it into the universe. That neuroplasticity. Exactly. And then the fun thing with the stress jars is, like, once you deal with your stress, you can then do whatever is, like, 
feels good for you on releasing that. So you can take the paper out and you can like burn it, you can waterboard it, you can recycle it, you can shred it, like recycle. Can, like whatever feels good for you, you can do. And then just repeat whenever you have a new stressor. Yeah. And then the last one is like a stress shower. So in the shower, if you shower at night, this works best with showering at night, but you can also do it with like washing your face or brushing your teeth, whatever. But essentially the, the concept of it is like, when you're in the shower and you, you're washing your body and stuff, telling yourself, like, hey, I'm washing away all of today's stressors. And as the water, you know, rinses it off, it's coming off my body. Like, the negative energy is going away. It's going down the drain. And when you get out of the shower, you're like, I'm just telling yourself, like, I'm now mm -hmm. stress relieved. Yeah. And once again, filling that empty space, though. So, like, when you put lotion on after the shower or your clothes on or whatever, like, kind of just, once again, telling yourself, like, I'm filling that negative space with something that feels good, mm -hmm. you know? And so yeah. those can be helpful. Yeah. Um, and then also just things that stimulate, once again, the parasympathetic nervous system. So some of that stuff is like light yoga, um, stretching, going for a walk, drinking meditation. green tea, meditation, sex. Um, and, sex. Yeah, sex. <laughs> sex and sex. Um, and so... Yeah, just doing things that make you feel good and scheduling time for yourself too and setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. A lot of times boundaries like I are hear, so, so important. Yeah. A lot of times I hear like people who are like, Oh yeah, like I finish work at five PM and then I go home and I work until like ten PM and then go to bed. I'm like, Why do you work at home? Mm -hmm. Like can and they're like, Oh, I just like have so much stuff. I'm like, let's look at your productivity of the day though. Like, which they pay you. Are you busy? Like, cause there's a difference between being busy and being productive. Yeah. You know, and it's all about intention too. But also like Gabby said, like it can fucking wait. Like we weren't put on this earth to just fucking work away yeah. and hate our lives. Like we live, we work to live. We don't live to work. I think it could be, it can just become a routine and that in itself can be stressful because sometimes we feel like we're on this endless hamster wheel where it's like we get up, we go to work, we work out, we come home, we go to bed, we do the same thing over and over again, you know? So it's like I said, getting out of that constant routine and doing something that's good for you and something that you enjoy um, will really help with that. And then also implementing those things like meditation, even if it's five minutes in your day, like there's this app called headspace and it is a meditation app so it has little things like say um you want to go to sleep and do a meditation before that or you just wake up it has um little things that you can do and it's like five minute meditations i think they have up to like 20 minute meditations as well um and doing that every day so you can do that right when you wake up you can do it throughout your day if you feel stressed or even before you go to bed mm -hmm. um those are really good just habits to get into your everyday life and it's just it'll become a habitual thing wherever you do are stressed you can be like okay i'm going to pull this out of my little toolbox and i'm going to meditate real quick and get my mind right another thing too that is helpful for stress is a lot of times what leads to chronic stress is when we feel like we don't have control yeah. over our life or what is causing us stress mm -hmm. and so we've got different realms of stressors so we've got like environmental stress we have physical stress mental stress spiritual emotional relationship blah 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 like all of the domains of health essentially have their own ability for stressors mm -hmm. and so what can be really helpful is identifying where is your stress coming from is it a physical stressor is it a mental stressor is it whatever or do you have multiple and then once you've identified what aspect of stress it is then breaking it down and being like all right what can i control what do I have some control over and what do I have no control over? Because mm -hmm. it makes no sense to stress over things that you absolutely have no control over. Yeah. But identifying what you do have control over and what you have some control over helps with really being genuine about like, yeah, I literally have no control over that, you know? Yeah. And so feeling that sense of control and coming up with ways to reduce the stress of what you can control can also help and prevent like that stress becoming chronic yeah and if you do have a lot of stressors we all have our own story you know we Just all run away <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> run away to a spa <laughs> mimosas <laughs> We all have our own stressors and we all have our own like childhood traumas and this can be really overwhelming. So like I highly recommend if you feel like you cannot manage and these little tools are not enough, like get a therapist, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a therapist in that outside perspective because they don't know you, you know, they don't know your life. They don't know the people that you know in your life. So it's kind of nice having an outside perspective of, um, another person and they also help give you tools in order to manage that and set healthy boundaries. A lot of 
times if it is stressors with like people or like your work or jobs, like they'll give you tools in order to have those healthy communication and set those healthy boundaries with those people. You know, if it's something to do with people, all it is is communication. You have to be good at communication. I think just kind of to wrap this up is, you know, one thing that we didn't really touch on and we'll just briefly go over is, Mm -hmm. you know, after now learning about how stress affects your mind, your digestive system, your body, your immune system, Mm -hmm. all that stuff, like also take that and apply it to your training as well. You know, last week we talked about progressive overload and progressive overload can cause a lot of stress on the system. Well, exercise in general is a stressor on the body. It's usually perceived as good and helps with resiliency, but sometimes if we have a lot going on or if we're getting over being sick, that stress from exercise. Or you're overtraining. Yeah, Yeah. or you're overtraining. And so sometimes with like progressive overload, um, It can lead to more stress on the system. So really just listening to your body and finding and being okay, like giving yourself permission to rest more Mm -hmm. than one fucking day a week, you know? And like, there is a fine line that you have to kind of navigate and be transparent with yourself about because like, there's times when we don't feel like working out and it's like, is it because I actually need more rest or is it just because my motivation is gone? Yeah. You know, and kind of navigating that and a way to kind of tell is like, if you go to the gym where you start exercising or you you just go for a walk or something just to see if movement does make you feel better, then it was probably just lack of motivation. But if, like, you go for a walk to try and see if movement will help you feel better and then, like, halfway through you're like, I'm exhausted, exhausted. or this fucking sucks, like, take another rest day. Like, I've literally gone weeks before with no exercise because my body yeah. felt like shit because my mental capacity for stress is very overwhelmed right now. And so yeah. it affects my physical, like, I can definitely feel like on, on weeks when my stress is higher and my sleep is, you know, affected from that stress and I go Mm -hmm. to work out, things that should be light or be easy feels horrible. Yeah. And it's like, oh, maybe I should have rested today. Yeah. (laughs) So, like, don't be afraid to rest. Always honor your emotions, always honor your feelings, and your body will be as good to you as you are to it, so. That's beautiful. That should be on a (laughs) t-shirt. We need to start making t-shirts. The tips say. <laughs> the tips say. Just remember that, you know, we've got one life. You should feel good during it. So life if you're not gonna feeling be okay, good, and... you start changing things so that you can feel good. Yes. And yeah, like emotions and feelings are scary. Trust me, I don't like feeling them, but they're there for a reason. And they're essentially a biofeedback mechanism of something uh-huh. that's not going well in your life. And so, you know, just do things to feel better. Yeah. You got this. We got this. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Alrighty, so yeah, this was um, episode three. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, we'll see you next week. Bye. Toodles.